Hey YouTube, just a few hours ago Nintendo absolutely dropped the mic with an update planned for release on November 5, which is going to be free. It has been labelled as version 2.0, but they did mention that this is the last major free content upgrade. So it means we're going to be stuck with this version, which is absolutely full to the brim, but we'll probably get minor updates for free. But they did announce the DLC, which is Happy Home Paradise, which is a great addition to the game. Pre-orders for this DLC will be available from the 29th of October, so not too far away. But the DLC is combining somewhat with the updates for version 2.0 of Animal Crossing and I'm so excited about the crossover between the updated game and the DLC pack which allows you to unlock things. For now I'll completely skip over the fact that Brewster is Brewster and he's inside the roost there but the cool thing about this is that there is a new amiibo calling center which you can call NPC amiibos which would normally be reserved only just for Harv's Island but now you can interact with them inside the roost. And to add to that, the DLC, if you do get it, allows you to call in amiibos including the special NPCs like Tom Nook and Timmy and Tommy and allows you to interact with them after hours in their own homes and stylize them as you like, which is really cool. They didn't really cover what's new in terms of villager availability, but they did announce over social media that they will be releasing a 48-pack Series 5 of Amiibo cards, including those hard-to-get and exclusive villagers, Raymond, Judy, Sherb, and the others. Unlike Series 1-4 to 4, though, the NPC scene is exploding in this deck, with 25 NPC rather than the 16-17 to 17 usual from Series 1-4. to 4. And in addition to those eight previously exclusive New Horizons villages, we're getting what looks like another set of 16 villages, which even includes a mouse, which I really want to get. And I'm not even a fan of the mouse type villages. Check that Robo Oct too. And the Amiibo cards will be released in line with the software update as well on the 5th of November. Although it does look like us Aussies do get shortchanged with only three in a pack again. Up until now, we would take Dodo Airlines to a mystery island, in which case now Cap'n makes a return from New Leaf, wearing some cool shades, to take us to mystery islands. The really exciting part about this is taking a boat ride to a mystery island with Cap'n here will land you on an island which will give you some new vines that are climbable, looks like you can take them home, plus some new flower types. And not only that, the seasons will change, unlike the ones you take with Dodo Airlines. So you might be summer and land in winter and also different times of the day. Hugely exciting. Check out those weird flowers or weeds or whatever they are. So in addition to that as well, you can set up a permanent ladder at any point to climb any cliffs. Now, can you get to a third level as I predicted? I'm not sure. We'll find out sure enough. But the fact that you can do this anywhere is absolutely awesome. The way you unlock this is through a recipe through Nook's Cranny and you can craft it and build as many of these permanent ladders as you like. I had predicted in a previous video that we were going to get four extra ramps and whilst I'm not truly right, you do get an extra two per type. So two bridges and two inclines, which comes to four. Bingo! The other cool thing we can do is change the exterior of our houses. So we get a few more options when it comes to the facade at the front of your house, which is great. You can have that to match your style of island. And as I've openly admitted, I'm a digital hoarder when it comes to this game. So the fact that we can max it beyond the 2400 to another three steps of 3200, 4000 and 5000, I'm sure I'm still going to run out of space. But at least it gives me a little bit more breathing room. On the topic of storage, how many times have you wanted to get access to the stuff inside your house? Or get rid of stuff whilst you're carrying it? Well, now you can with this new storage and it looks like you can put this anywhere on your island, whatever's convenient. So this is great. It allows you to get access to the exact same contents as what you would in your house. So it's kind of like a shed. And the other cool thing is the ABD being placed outside. Now I'm not sure whether or not this is pulling it out from an existing one. Is this a second ABD? Not entirely sure but I'm definitely going to put one near my airport. Harv's Island always did seem a little bit barren 
and now we've opened it up to what I thought initially when we announced with Direct that it was going to be a campground. It looks like it's going to be a plaza of sorts, so it means that we're going to have different vendors. So rather than having to wait for Sahara and Kix, you've got access to them here. You just have to sort of buy your way into getting them onto this particular plaza, which is great. So there's no more waiting around for that day that you might miss because you didn't play on Sahara. And it looks like we also get the ability to customize some of these objects that we couldn't before. And it looks like Katrina makes an, a reappearance from New Leaf. And Tortimer looks like he's back in town again, who used to be the old mayor before you came along. And Harriet looks like she gives us some new hairstyles as well, which you can unlock as soon as you get her. The one thing I'm super excited about which comes to us from New Leaf is the fact that we can set an ordinance or a law on your town. And there are four types to pick from. I'll cover off the early bird and late owl to start off with. So if you are a person that likes to play the game early, you can shift all the happenings of the game to earlier starts. So for example, Nook's Cranny would open earlier than the 8 o'clock that your normal used to would be might be 6 o'clock. And the times might be in sync with New Leaf or not, we'll find out soon enough. But it does allow you to play the game to your own lifestyle, which I think is great. The other two ordinances are the Bell Boom and the and the beautiful island ordinance. So the bell boom one means that you can sell things for a better price. So you can quickly get up in the game, especially for new starters, which is awesome. But the beautification one is more around trying to make the island a bit more beautiful. So everyone is a bit more conscious when it comes to making the island beautiful. I wonder if it does make a change to how long flowers will live. So when a bell ordinance is in play, it means that the flowers will last longer. Whereas if you have an other ordinance in play, it might mean that the flowers will now start to die, which is in line with new leaf. So I'd be curious to see how that plays out and stick around for the next one as well, because this one might play on that. Now, this will be interesting because you can now craft food or rather cook food because it looks like the icons changed to both crafting and cooking. So you can now grow some of these vegetables, which includes wheat, tomato, potatoes, carrots, in addition to the existing pumpkins. This looks like it's unlocked through the Nook Mile rewards. And you'll be able to cook on any stovetop that you've got in the game as well. So it looks like it'll behave the same way as a wardrobe would. And it does look like you unlock this through this DIY Recipes Plus option, which I'm not sure what that means. Does that tie in with what you can redeem from Nook Mile Rewards? And it looks like the ingredients that you use for the particular recipe will all add up to your power when it comes to eating food. Now, if you are looking for something else to collect, the gyroids are back in town. So it means that you can collect these little cuties to put inside your house. And what's cool about this is that they're fragments which is unlike leaf, so you can water them because they are born from historically through rain. So if you pick one up that's partially broken, you can put it back in the ground, water it or let it rain and you'll get it to grow. And look how cute they are. It does look like it's only inside again, much like new leaf, but I do wonder that you can put this outside given that we can have stereos and other sound systems in the outside on the island. And if they weren't cute enough, you can customize them as well. And the one thing to note is because they're fragments, in case you missed it, you can actually place them on the table, it looks like. So that's a little bit different. If your fencing options were getting a little bit stale, we're being rewarded with a bunch of new types like park, block, corrugated, large lattice and log wall, all of which will probably be likely be DIY extensions that we're going to get. So more DIYs to learn, which is awesome. Now, the other thing that was predicted in the previous video, which I'll leave in the description below, is the ability to customize your fences. So now you can have a white picket fence. It looks like you can also upgrade your camera to a pro camera, which gives you the ability to look through the eyes of your character. So it gives you a unique perspective. So freaky leaf here looks kind of funny. And it looks like it's a tripod camera as well. So you can set it aside so you can jump in the photo. And Judy's eyes are amazing, aren't they? pity that they're closed there. One of the things that you can do is now navigate these really tight areas. So you can do the shuffle as you do in real life. So it means you can cram your furniture a bit more in your unique spaces. And a few people are excited about Froggy Chair making an appearance again. If you're big on home decorating internals, you can now put ceiling 
lighting which changes the way that the room looks and in addition to some of the coverage that we've got with the happy home paradise dlc it makes for a different change and the one thing i didn't quite notice when i did watch this live is that you can change now one wall as an accent wall Here's a longer look of all the rewards that you can get from Nook Miles point of view when it comes to this particular update. So you can get a pro decorating, the custom fencing, new reactions, along with the pro construction license, which I wonder what that is. KK returns with some brand new songs and doesn't miss a beat. See what I did there? So you've got some more songs to collect. So hopefully this will work really good with some of the new gyroids. You gotta love a poker song. And the other thing you get is this little music box as well, which is a new edition furniture item. So I can't wait to hear that one. And given the fact that we can now hang things from the ceiling, we get the option with extra furniture items from Nook's Cranny. But I still wonder whether you can upgrade it or not. Which might be covered with some of the expansion through the DLC. In a previous video, I'd explained how to get some of this fabric furnishing from Sable. So in addition to being able to customize furniture, you can now wear it as well as use it on the wall for that accent wall, which again, really good look. And a segue into look, you do get some four new hairstyles, which if you're into the hairstyle side of things, it's great. And if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing and hit that bell icon to be notified of new video content that I upload. Also, good opportunity to give this video a like if you're enjoying it. It looks like we get new reactions as part of a notebook as well. So we get eight new reactions, I think it was. So finally, I can bop along and wave goodbye, which is kind of cool. So there's a fair bit there to digest when it comes to the updates for 2.0. But let's have a look to see what's in Happy Home Paradise as the DLC. Now to get to the resort itself, you do have to use Dodo Airlines to head over to that. And I do wonder whether or not we all get unique set of islands. So it's kind of like Greece where you've got a whole bunch of little islands, makes up a big place. So in this case, this is the way to get to. So I'm really keen to see whether we get a random set of islands or whether it's exactly the same. Now for a price point of under $40, I think you're getting a lot of great value. You're extending the game by almost double. So it's a really good crossover, especially with the, some of the stuff which, which we'll cover off in a second as well. So have a look at this for a second. So notice the flowers there on the boat. So I wonder if this is going to be your transport, but the question is, who will it be? Will it be Leilani, who is Kappen's wife, or will it be a grown up Layla, who's the daughter of Leilani? I wonder, and check out the blue birds on this island, kind of cool. And I guess the main reason that you're on this island is to do your work, which is a planner. So you do get the option to customize the outside, just as you are used to joining the things on the inside. I'm hopeful that we can do this on our regular island aside from this particular paradise, but I'm not holding my breath on that. I think this is gonna be a custom planning option when it comes to this particular resort style. What would you give to be able to move your house like this? I did suggest that you can change the season, so I'm not sure if this is just to see what it might look like from the outside or whether you set the tone for this particular island. I'd be guessing it's just to see what it looks like. We do get a sneak peek as to what the islands would look like, so I wonder if we will get custom sort of island little sets. But what's interesting about this is the number of spots that you can place houses. So the question is, do we get more than 10 villages? So look at all the spots that are available on this map. Does that mean we can set up a villager on each one of these spots on each part of this grid? We've just expanded our villager collection to more than double. I'm going to try and pause and curb my enthusiasm a little bit about that because I'm hopeful that this will happen, but I'm really looking forward to making most of the Amiibo card collection that I've been growing up until now. So do check out my videos if you have any Amiibo card pack opening desires. Like Tortimer's Island, there is a alternative currency when it comes to payment for doing your work. So we get paid and spend in Pokey or Pocky, and we get some special items that we can take back to our island, which is kind of cool. But the linchpin to this 
DLC is the fact that you are a designer in this paradise and anything that you learn and unlock in this particular game DLC is extended to back at home as well. So once you unlock these partitions and soundscapes and all that sort of fun stuff that they've exposed, it means that this will come back to your own island as well. So there is a really good connection between the DLC and the regular game. You can also invite your own residents from your current island over to the resort. So if you're big on designing and interior decorating, this is going to be a hoot for you. And you can also co-locate two villages into one particular space, which is kind of fun. So I don't know if they have some sort of relationship or anything, but they can be roommates and you can have an area that they can play in as well. So again, it's probably more of a place that they can play with. One of the things that you can do is change the way these rooms are. And this is exactly where you can unlock some of these partitions, the pillars that you can set up, as well as the counters, which you can carry over from the Paradise Place back to your hometown as well, which again is a great connection. The lighting is cool as anything, and the fact that you can change the soundscape is an extra touch. And here's a look at some of the new NPC that's being exposed to us in this particular version of the game. And it looks like we have a fully fledged island in itself. This resort has got schools and other design facilities that you have to maintain. So it gives you that aspect of a complete community. It looks like this will definitely keep you busy for a good while, given that what we get a sense for what's in this. The Happy Home Network app looks really exciting. It's pretty much almost like Hogwarts, where you can have a live photo. So you take a snapshot and you can go back to that particular point in time, it seems, which is very interesting. Um, I really can't wait to see how that would work out. So you can make connections. It's almost follow type, like a social media sort of thing. So you can follow people that you like and also touch in to see who you visited and designed for in the past. So I hope you've enjoyed this video as a recap and deep dive into some of what we can see. So this is Alexia Giovanni signing off and until next time, see ya.